Father God, we just thank you tonight for this time in your word. We um, thank you, God, for just allowing us to come together in your word. And as we come tonight, Father, we thank you that the eyes of our understanding will be flooded with light. Thank you for everyone who's joining us tonight. We thank you, Father God, that um, it will be um, just a, a time of refreshing, that you'll refresh our spirits. And Holy Spirit, we say you are the teacher. You bring these things up. You bring all things to our remembrance. And we're looking to you to teach us tonight. And we give you the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. So we, we thank you for joining us tonight. Um, get your Bibles, your electronic devices as we dive into the word of God tonight. Um, and and I, just, I, I just implore you, just sit down. Don't, don't be doing anything else. Sit down and, and get your Bible out. And, and follow me as we go through the scriptures tonight. So because I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm trusting God and the Holy Spirit that as we go down through these things, even though there are some things that are coming out of my mouth as we're reading these things and as you're looking at them, now God is going to now bring some things up in you, something that maybe I haven't said, but because of something that I did say, God now he'll He'll bring up something that maybe you've been questioning about or maybe um, something that you need to know. God can reveal it even in this time. Amen. He's, he's just that kind of God. And so we've been talking about the truth, our reality. We have to um, get to the place that we are so convinced. We are um, So, I, I'm trying to think of a way to say it, um, so trusting of God that if I see it in his word, if I hear it in my spirit, and it lines up with the word of God, that I can live by what I have received from God. We, 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 we want to build our trust in God. We want to build our trust in what he has said. Um, and because of that now, knowing what he says, and see, this is the thing that we have to do, is we have to live in this word. We have to make this word, the word of God, a priority in our lives because actually this is true. This is um, um, the reality lying at the basis of the thing. It is. It should be, as a believer, it should be our reality. And so I don't care what else comes across. If I filter it through the word of God, and that is a decision now that we have to make, and we have to be conscious of it, that I don't care what's going on. And it's some, it's some, it's a lot of things going on right now. Um, I, I, you know, you look into the scripture and you see where Jesus talked to us about the end times and what it would look like in the end times. And there's so much of what he has said that is actually going on now. It's just so much that is going on that we as a believer, we have to stand for truth. We have to stand for truth because uh, people are trying to impose all kind of things. Um, on everybody, um, but we're going to have to stand for the truth, and let me just throw this in there. There'll be times because we stand for, look, truth is going to set you apart. It sets us apart, and so there'll be times when we'll come, and, 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 and so look, I'm standing in truth, and those around me, we may anger them. You may even be persecuted, and, and, you know, persecution for us, for the most part, you know, people talking about us and all that kind of stuff, which, I mean, if you put a lot of stock in that, you, you aren't going to go very far because I don't care what you do. You can do all right and they're going to say something. You can do all wrong and they're going to say something. So we can't put out our, our trust or, or what we, the way we're going to live and what people are saying. Or we can't not stand for the truth because we don't want um, any kind of feedback or any kind of, you know, anybody coming against us. When you stand for truth, you, it's going to look, it's going to set you apart. You are gonna, you're not even trying to <laughs> look different. And true, it, it just, you stand out. You stand out. 
So uh, just get ready for that if we're going to walk in truth. Amen. All right. So uh, last week we stopped um, talking um, at the point we were talking about the source of truth. And for those of you that were not with us on last week, let me give you the definition of truth because we want to keep this at the forefront. Truth is defined as the reality lying at the basis of an appearance. The reality lying at the basis of an appearance. The manifested, actual, for real, genuine, true, unquestionable, legit essence of a matter. Okay? And I also said on last week that as believers, we must filter or examine everything through the eyes of truth. As a believer, we're going to have to do that. I was, um, I, and, and I didn't go back and look at the scripture, but it just came up to me. Do you know that it is the will of God? Um, if you're listening, you aren't right now, you aren't serving God, and you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to tell you this. This is the truth. It is the will of God that none should perish, but that all would come to the knowledge of the truth. It is the will of God that nobody perishes. See, that's the love of God. That is, um, Father, when he created us, it was out of him wanting to fellowship, having a relationship with each one of us. But he does not force himself on any of us. He gives us enough um, information around us. He gives us, uh, um, uh, you know, people in our paths. Um, he's always uh, endeavoring to get our attention. Even if you don't know him, you can look just at the creation of things and just know it has to be a God. And you have to know that God loves you and it is his will that none, nobody perishes, but that all will come to the knowledge of the truth. And so that's the reason why we minister the word. That's the reason why we, God has set up uh, uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, uh, believers that are sharing uh, with other people that they come in contact with so that they can know the truth. And at the point of them knowing and hearing the truth, now they can make a decision. And, you know, there are people all around us that are perishing, um, not because it is the will of God, it's because they won't accept the truth and yet truth is being proclaimed all over the place but as a believer we want to make sure that we filter everything in our lives through the truth we, we want it because I don't know about you but I want to be in the will of God I want um, God's will to be done in my life and I want to do his will that that he has um, purposed uh, birthed me in this earth for I want that lived out in my life. I want it. I want it. And so it's going to come uh, through my relationship with him, through knowing the truth, through spending time with him, and just following what he says, even though others around me may be going a different direction. Look, what you, you have to determine in your heart, I'm going to follow what God is telling me and leading me to do. Um, and, you know, when we have that heart, and we have that desire in us, and we're spending time with God. God knows that, and he, he'll, he'll lead, he'll guide, he'll direct. And even when we may get off course a little bit, it's, it's just the goodness of God. He, he's just so gentle about just getting us right back on course, not rejecting us, not saying, no, that was your last time, I'm through with you. But he's always endeavoring, like, come on back, come on, let's get back on course, and then let's move on. Amen. Hallelujah. We serve a good God. Amen. Glory to God. Okay. So 
um, we ended last week um, in St. John 17, 17. And let's go back because I want to, um, we're going to go into uh, what we're going to talk about tonight. Um, St. John 17, 17. And it says, this is Jesus talking. And I told you on last week, um, you know, uh, we're looking at prayers that Jesus is actually praying to the Father as he gets ready to go um, to the cross. He's just spending some time with God, praying with his disciples and praying over his disciples, okay? So in verse 17, 17, chapter 17, verse 17, and I'm reading out of the King James Version, it says, sanctify them through thy truth. Here we go. Thy word is truth. So God's word is truth, okay? All right, now, um, there is an opposite, or um, if I can say opposite, an opposition to truth. Um, and you're either in the truth or you're not. You either know the truth or you don't, okay? So let's look at um, St. John, uh, verse, uh, chapter 8. Let's go there. St. John, chapter 8. Um, and let's read... Mm. I'm going to start with verse 30, 42, but I want you to go back um, uh, up and just read that whole chapter. Um, uh, Jesus is having some conversation, some interaction with some religious people uh, uh, of that day. And so there are some things that are coming out and uh, because of what Jesus is teaching, and Jesus is he's, he's only teaching, proclaiming, declaring truth. Because he said that I only say what I hear my father say. So if you'll just go back through that, look at that chapter, because I don't want to read it all tonight. Um, you do that on your time. Um, but let's begin with verse 42, and then we'll read on into uh, verse 44. Y'all ready? Okay. And I'm reading this from the King James translation. It says, Jesus said unto them, now you got to go back because there's been some conversation going uh, on between Jesus and these um, uh, Jewish Jews, um, the F Sadducees and Pharisees, um, the religious um, leaders of that day. So there's some interaction that's been going on, but I don't want to go back and read out of that. So uh, verse 42 says, Jesus said unto them, if, listen at, listen at how he's, he's uh, talking to him. If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Verse 43, why do you not understand my speech? Beca even because you cannot hear my word. Now, now the, 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 these are the people that should have known the word of God. They should have known. They should have known uh, when Jesus showed up who he was, but they didn't. Verse 44, he says, listen at this. You, ye, are of your father the devil and the lust of your father you will do he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in truth when he speaketh a lie he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. So the, the uh, opposite or that that does not apply to truth actually came out of Satan. Now, he, Jesus calls Satan their father. Now, all of us have a father, have a natural father. Um, 
you came from, you know, there had to be a man, a woman, uh, there had to be sperm, there had to be a coming together of sperm and egg, and so uh, all of us have a father. I don't care now in this, in this society how they're trying to uh, make two males or make two females and all of this stuff. You have to have a male and a female. Male, female, okay? Um, but he talks about y that your father abode not in the truth. And so Satan steps outside of his, his very purpose for being created. He decides on his own that he's going to exalt his throne above God's. Bad, bad decision, bad mistake. So he came out of truth. When I saw that, um, when he talks about that he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. He did not abide in the truth because, listen at this, there is no truth, no truth, N-O, no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, now lie is the opposite of truth, okay? When he speak of the lie, and actually because he, there's no truth in him, everything he says is a lie. Everything. He abode not in the truth. When he speaketh the lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Let's read on down, and then we, I, I want to spend a little more time right there, but I want to read on down. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's word. He therefore hear, you therefore hear them not, because you are not of God. All right? Now, God, uh, Jesus is just addressing them directly. And you know, he said, look, I only say what I hear my father say. The father is telling him, okay, tell them this. All right? But I want to go, um, because since we're talking about this, let's look at, um, uh, go over to Genesis. Genesis 3, and we'll come back to uh, St. John, maybe. Genesis 3, and let's look at verse 1. This is good. All right, Genesis 3, okay, and verse 1. Listen at this. Now, we talked about um, Satan. He, he, he can't tell the truth. Everything that comes out of him is a lie, all right? Uh, chapter 3, I'm reading this from the King James translation. It says, now the serpent, talking about Satan, was more, more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, listen at this, yes, hath God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Now, she comes back with what God has said. Um, Satan gives her a suggestion, okay? Then, she comes back with what God said. Then, listen at his reply. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. Now, what did God say? God said, you don't eat of this tree, right, or you will die. He comes back with, now nah, that, that really is not going to happen, okay? Verse 5, for God knows, for, for God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. 
And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Now, now let's go back through this. Now, you, in, in St. John, um, Jesus said that, look, he was telling them, you are of your father, um, the devil, for he is a liar, and the lie originated with him. There is no truth in him, so he cannot tell the truth. So in this instance right here with Eve, he comes with a suggestion that um, says, you know, um, I'm trying to find what's okay. Yea, hath God said, you shall not eat of every tree? Okay, and then she says, well, we can eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but there's one that we cannot eat of, lest we die, all right? So now he comes back with <laughs> that, <laughs> that will not happen. How many times, and I know in our lives, it, this has happened to us. We have the word of God. Okay, there may be a situation or a circumstance that arises that makes it appear that the word of God is not true. And so we'll get this suggestion of, well, maybe you ought to do this. Okay, true, surely that is not what God meant. Okay, so we may go with that suggestion. But we got to know, here we go back to this point. I'm on purpose. I have to become consciously aware that if, if I get a suggestion outside of what the word of God says, I've got to filter, y'all. We have to filter it through the truth of the word of God. I don't care what the suggestion is. I don't care if it looks like it's, 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 it'll work or it looks good on the outside. We have, if it doesn't line up with the word of God, then I don't have to receive it. And I can stay with what God has said. And we're going to talk about walking in truth. I'm going to stay with what God says regardless of what it appears like, regardless of what it seems like. And when that pressure is put on, see, this is the time, um, you know, always we should be building ourselves up in the word of God. Always we should be fellowshipping with God and hearing from God. Uh, no, you know, wanting to know, okay, God, what do I do here? God, this is what you said. I'm always reminding him of what he said, not for his purpose, but for mine, uh, so that I can keep myself in line with the word of God. But when these suggestions, when these things come against us that don't line up with the truth, and we, we must, we must make a conscious decision, this daily, this is daily, this is uh, an ongoing basis, that we decide, look, I'm filtering this to the truth, this does not line up with the truth of God's word, and I don't have to accept it. And we've got to stand there, we've got to stand there. Y'all, in these days, we, and, and I mean it all the time, even before these days, but especially now, we have to stand for truth and stand in the truth because so many things are coming against the truth. There is so much um, that's, that's being thrown at people, thrown at humanity, um, that people want you to swallow, and it's not in line with the word of God, and I don't have to accept it. I make this decision. Look, I'm staying with God. I'm going to do what he says. I'm going to walk in what I know, right? And then that that I don't know, as I spend time with the Father, as I spend time in his word, I, God is going to reveal things to me, all right? Okay. Let, let's go to 1 John. I think I've said, I think I've got um, what I wanted to get out of um, St. John. Um, let's go to 1 John. 
the epistle of John, 1 John 1, and let's look at verse 6, 1 John. And, and again, um, this is in the King James, 1 John. One and verse six. Okay. First John one and verse six. Listen at this. Listen at this. If we say now John is writing this epistle to the church, right? If we say, I'm in verse 6, we have fellowship with him and walk. Now, walking is a continuous movement. If we say, here, here's what's coming out of our mouths. We're saying we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie, and do not the truth. Fellowship, koinonia, um, uh, that, that, that walking with God. If I say I have fellowship with him and I'm walking in darkness, that doesn't go together. It does not go together. So if I say I have fellowship with him and I'm yet walking in darkness or walking according to the lie, I am lying and I'm not doing the truth. Truth separates us from darkness, from the things of darkness. You aren't going to be, when you're fellowshipping with him, you aren't going to be comfortable in darkness. It, don't, it just doesn't work like that because truth, we'll get into this later, Truth actually makes us free. So anything that uh, I was attached to in darkness, if I will stay with the truth, the truth will separate me. The truth will make me free, okay, from anything of darkness. So I can't say that I'm fellowship. Well, I can say it, but it'll be a lie. Um, because this is what he says here. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Why? Because doing the truth is going to make you free. It's going to separate you from the darkness. Is that not good? Awesome. All right. And our last scripture for tonight. Uh, while we're in First John, let's go over to uh, chapter 2. And let's look at verse... Four. Now John's writing this this letter to the church. Okay. First John, chapter two, verse four. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Okay, and so I can look at this as, oh, it's so good. I, I'm going to read that again, and then I'm going to go down a little bit, go down to uh, six, and then we'll, we'll call it quits for the night. He says, he that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso, listen at this, keepeth his word in him, Verily is the law, love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. And so in keeping of his commandments, in the keeping of his word, Herein is truth. It will do that. The love of God is perfected in us. 
And if we say, I know him, I know, I know him. And I'm not keeping or doing what he said, keeping his word, walking in line with his word. The scripture says I'm a liar and the truth is not in me. So we want to stay with truth. All right. So we'll pick up um, next week right here. We'll talk about some more things about truth. Um, we, um, I just invite you to stay with us because just some good things that truth will do for us. We're going to get into that because the scripture says so much about truth and what the truth will do and um, has done and will do for us and through us. And so we want to just keep that in mind as we go forward. So we're talking about the truth our reality amen so father tonight we thank you for this word we thank you father for this people that are hearing god father god it is our desire to understand it is our desire to know truth and so we thank you tonight father god that the eyes of our understanding are being flooded with light father that you've given unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge in the knowing of him and we thank you for that father thank you for your word thank you for truth that is making us free and we give you praise honor and glory in jesus name amen amen i want to um before we end tonight just give you an opportunity those of you that have not received jesus christ as your lord and savior we want to give you the opportunity to do that it is it's so simple i said on last week that it is the will of god that nobody perishes that everybody comes to the knowledge of the truth god has given us truth but once you get the truth then you make a decision on whether you want to receive the truth or not and the, one of the truths that I want to give to you tonight is that Jesus um, came to this earth. He has already died for your sins. And all you need to do is just to receive what Jesus has already done on your behalf. To receive him as Lord of your life. And so if you want to do that tonight, just pray this simple prayer after me. Say, dear God, I believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins. I believe tonight that you raised him from the dead. And Father, I receive him now as my Lord and Savior. Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you now as my Lord. I call you Lord. I receive the infilling of your precious Holy Spirit. And Father, I thank you tonight that I am born again. I am filled with your spirit and Jesus is my Lord. That's just so simple. Now, after you've done that, and because you have done that, you need to get take your time, get into the word of God, and let the truth of God make you free. There are some things now that you, you, you don't know, but it, it's the will of the Father that you know. And so if you go to our website, and that is www.nloc-outreach.com. Uh, tap on the What Next tab, or it's, I think that's what it says. Um, and you, if you click on that tab and go into that tab, it will give you some, it says what now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. What now? You look, click on that tab, and it will give you some information that you can begin your walk with the Lord. Um, I uh, just invite you, get into the Word of God. Um, get into the New Testament. Begin in the in the the, um, the gospels and it just talks about Jesus and just go on through and let father just minister to your heart amen but we say tonight welcome to the family hallelujah God is good and he is for you and not against you amen all right um, um, for before we leave we want to give you um, those of you that are members here at Newness of Life, you know what to do concerning your tithe and offerings. But others of you that may not uh, be a part of this ministry, um, we just invite you to give. Uh, never a time when um, your giving will be in vain. Uh, we believe that this is good ground. Uh, you let Father speak to your heart on what you are to give. Uh, we'll receive it, um, and um, because of the seed of it, you'll reap a harvest on it. So um, I, I want to also say for those of you that may be watching and you don't have a, you're not a part of a local 
uh, body of believers or local church. You need to get connected with, with a local body of believers. We invite you here, but if Father says for you to do something else, go somewhere else, then you do what you hear Father saying to you. But we would love to have you here at Newness of Life World Outreach Center. All right. Well, my time is up tonight. Thank you for yours. And remember, you can walk in a new quality of life. Amen.